Welcome back to Camera West TV. My name's Carlo, and today we're taking a look at something special for the SL2 system. And it comes from Condor Blue. All right, so as you may know, I use the SL system for filming these videos. I'm actually using an SL2S right now to film this video. I think I've talked about in the past that I've wanted to make a rig for the SL. So our friends over at Condor Blue had sent us over something special. So let's just unbox this. All right, let's take a look at what's inside. What else do we got in here? Got some stickers. All right, let's get this out of the way. So our friends over at Condor Blue make aerospace grade aluminum cages for video cameras. Now I've always wanted to rig out the SL system. I think for video production, it's a great camera. And I think ergonomically this will change the way that I use the camera overall. So they were kind enough to send us one of their cages for the SL2. So yeah, let's uh, open this box and see what we got. All right, let's get rid of this plastic. Let's pop it open. And looks like we have more stickers. <laughs> so kind of them to send us more stickers. And then right here, we have a installation video card. So you just scan the QR code. You can watch how they set it up on their YouTube channel. They already have a video up on their YouTube channel. Um, they go over how to set it up and as well as the tech spec. So you should definitely go check that out. Um, pretty much, I think we're just gonna breeze through this and kind of just start setting it up. So in the box, you get all your goodies, individually bubble wrapped. The whole cage comes in pieces. Uh, the one that they sent us comes with the handle. And this right here is the top handle. So I'm just gonna unwrap these really quickly. I mean, right off the bat, honestly, this is some really good quality. I love that they have this little rubber grip down here. I think ergonomically, this is gonna feel pretty sturdy and, you know, comfortable in my hand. And if, so you can see here that there's a built-in Allen key, so you know, you don't have to find or carry an extra tool with you. And there's a bubble leveler right up here. So you can always make sure that you have your horizon straight, your camera's not tilted. And you also have a cold shoe right there where I believe that's where you can mount, you know, a monitor or a few other options. And then you have a bunch of different mounting holes for different accessories. So this is pretty cool. I like the weight of it. It actually feels very, very sturdy. So I'm excited to see how the rest of this is gonna feel put together. And then here it looks like we have the Arca Swiss bottom plate. So this is gonna mount to the bottom of the camera. And as you can see down here, there are also some more built-in tools that just help with the assembly for this rig or for this cage. Let's quickly breeze through this a little bit. And this looks like a cold shoe stop or an addition for the cold shoe and also has a bubble leveler on the top. So we'll see what that part goes to in just a second. So as you can see, we have the body for the cage. Now this is actually three pieces. You can see that it's actually screwed in um, right there by four screws. So we also have the bubble level on the top. So this is where the top of the camera is. So as you can see on the back side of the cage, they machined a part for the lugs to snugly fit in. Um, I think that's pretty cool and a good addition, especially to make sure your camera is secure and snug in this rig. They gave us another main Allen key to help with the setup. So I'm just gonna quickly assemble this on the camera and kind of go over my thoughts on how this is gonna be an essential piece to our video making kit moving forward. So. Luckily they sent us the space gray colorway. I think it'll match really well on the silver SL2. And they also have a deep black version, which I think is very sleek and very stealth looking, but this will definitely match the silver SL2. So we're just gonna start assembling this and put this rig together. So the bottom plate is actually an Arca Swiss mount. So it's pretty universal and is pretty handy for quick changing or quick release. So I'm gonna mount this onto the camera. I think I might need 
this tool. So far, I'm very impressed with the build quality in these parts. Everything feels very solid. It doesn't feel cheap at all, even though at a price point of around $200, I think you get a pretty well-made sturdy product. There's the quick release, so that way it helps lock in your camera and makes it fully secure. And then we're just gonna go ahead and lock it. Then boom, now we have the bottom plate attached. And then now we're gonna attach the top part of the cage. Oh, looks like I gotta undo some screws down here. It's very handy that they include the tools. Oh, and look at that. The tools are actually magnetic. I don't know if you can see that, but that's pretty cool. And then there's another Allen key over here that's also magnetic, so you'll never lose your tool. Man, that is some ingenious design. Um, this is my first experience with a cage, so I think this kind of stuff is very fascinating and very interesting. All right, let's unscrew these and mount the whole cage together. So I think ideally you don't even need to have the camera mounted onto the bottom plate in order to fit the entire cage together. The whole point of this is so you can slip the camera on and slip it out if you needed to um, very quickly. I think that will make, you know, switching between the tripod and, you know, having this be handheld will make a huge difference. I got one more screw. So now that those screws are off, can go ahead and insert this into the grooves. So you just wanna make sure everything is lined up with the lugs themselves, and then it should just slip on like so. And then here, we just need to lock it in with the same screws that we were using earlier. I know what you're thinking. It's probably easier if I do this without the camera mounted and you're probably right. All right, you're right. I'm gonna just take the camera off and just quickly assemble this. The nice thing is once this is all assembled, hopefully you don't have to disassemble it again. But also this is a very easy rig to set up. Um, I'm not sure if other cages are this simple to do and to assemble, but so far, this has been very easy and smooth. And you have varying size mounting holes for different accessories. So I think that's very helpful, especially if you deal with a lot of accessories for your rig. And so we have the full cage assembled. As you can see, it's a very nice sturdy box. You know, you can hear it's definitely metal. And then don't forget to put your tool back. All right, let's slip on the camera and we're just gonna unlock that. And the camera should just slide into place like so. Nice, and then we're just gonna lock it. So now you can use the camera much more comfortably. You can attach handles if you needed. You can also attach this top plate, which I'll do in a little bit. So I think the fact that you have quick access points to your SD slots, as well as a clear access point to your ports is very, very useful. Let's go ahead and attach the handle. So let's attach the handle. Um, basically it slides on right here, like so you just on, so you just loosen this portion and you should be able to just slide on like so. This is actually great because you don't put any excess stress on the hot shoe itself. So if you needed to, you can mount something onto the hot shoe. Before I forget, I wanna mention that this part that you may see sitting at the front of the tray actually secures the top part of the camera to the top part of the cage. And you just, you know, insert the plate onto the hot shoe. And from there, you tighten it down. You have another bubble leveler and you have a fully secured camera. Anyway, back to the main video. And you're actually locking it in in a very like cool rail system where it just slides on and off. So if you didn't need this handle, you know, you can just easily detach it. But yeah, look at that. It looks really good with the silver and the space gray combo. But yeah, I think that looks pretty cool. 
So right now I have the 50 millimeter F2 Sumicron. This is the non-APO one. Um, this is basically a bundle that you can get as well as I have here the 24 to 70. I'm showing you the two lenses that I predominantly use to make these videos, for example. So I think if I were to use this for very close, intimate close-ups or, you know, needing to do a handheld option, this will give me more flexibility when, while I'm doing that. You know, let's put on the 24 to 70. I think that'll be a pretty close representation of what I would be using this for. So let's put that on. So right here, this evenly distributes the weight. So now I don't have to, you know, hurt my shoulders holding the camera up like so. And I have here my external monitor, which now I don't think I necessarily need these two junction points. So this can just slip on like so, and I can tighten this down and then when you're using this, this will be helpful for cable management. So I'll just go straight into the camera, like so. And we can't forget about the battery for this monitor. So as you can see, this is basically a similar setup that I used to film the Y the M6 video. I think this will be a much more ergonomic way to use the camera and I'm holding it in front of my face. So essentially I can hold the camera at a much more reasonable height and then I can tilt it, I can do this. I can still take advantage of the autofocus while tapping the screen if I need to, but now I have much more control over manual focusing as well as zoom control. I think if I were using the camera like this or holding it like this, ergonomically, this might not be the best way. I know that you can also get handles that you can attached to this rig. So the best part about this is that it's very customizable to suit your needs. I don't think I'll be using this exact setup all the time, but I think having the option and ability to do so is great. For literally just under 200 bucks, gives you a professional looking rig. And I know that you can go way further with the customization and builds for something like this. You can even make this a more complex build if you needed to. You can add rails and a follow focus so that way you can use cinema lenses or manual focus lenses much easier. You can attach a battery pack so you can power the camera as well as power your monitor at the same time. And then you can also attach small hard drives to the back so you're not overloading your cards inside the camera. So I think the build quality of this is actually very robust. It's not too heavy and I think it makes the camera feel like its own counterweight. So if I'm doing handheld movements like panning or moving or even just like walking and following, I think the movements will feel much more smooth, a little bit more natural, and it'll definitely look a lot less jittery or shaky. I hope you enjoyed seeing us unbox and set up the Condor Blue cage for the SL2. Hopefully for any of you that are looking to do video with the SL2 or SL2S, this could be a good option for you. I definitely would recommend it. And let me know down in the comments what you think of the new setup. I'm very excited to put this to use. So thank you again to the kind folks over at Condor Blue. And thank you again to Lucas for working with us on this video. And make sure to check out their YouTube channel as well as their website. They're a great resource, especially for many videographers or cinematographers. They have so many different types of cages for different cameras. They just make good quality work. So definitely go check them out. And don't forget to check out likeastoresf.com or camerawest.com for your new or pre-owned needs. Once again, my name is Carlo. Thanks for watching. So excited to use this.